morning everybody how's everybody doing Hope good Hope everybody's having a great day so i'm my way back over to my buddy brian's today to work on the boat just leaving my house and uh yeah about an hour and a half drive over there me and my uh, trusty 2003 jeep grand cherokee i tell you what i <laughs> I've had, I think, two new vehicles in my entire lifetime. I love them, but I don't love the car payments. So yeah, 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee getting me there. And then uh, I also own like a mid 90s Ford F-250. I use that to haul wood around, but uh, yeah, I don't mind having an older vehicle. It, it gets me around and uh, you know, for my wife, we, uh, we definitely get her a newer vehicle. She has a very, very safe vehicles to get her and the kids around but uh, i don't mind driving the uh, there goes a uh, look like a fox way up ahead of me i doubt you can see it on the uh, video but yeah it looks like a fox maybe i can get a picture of it as we get closer here but uh, yeah on my way back back over to brian's work on the boat today today we're going to be working on the uh, the teak restoration uh, we got that all sanded down we're gonna oil stain that it's a solid oil stain and uh, we're gonna start working on some other things. Just a lot of cosmetic stuff. And uh, yeah, let's see if I see where that uh, fox took off to. He crossed right about here. Probably went into that little stand of pine trees over there. Probably over here at my neighbor's house looking at their uh, livestock. But uh, it's pretty cold out today. It's like 24. So yeah, he's out looking for looking for breakfast. He went somewhere over in there, not quite sure where. But anyway, take care there, Mr. Fox. All right, let's uh, let's head on over the boat. Well, everybody, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, just welcome. Thanks for thanks to all of you for clicking on the video. As you can see, that intro video was taken uh, during this last winter. I, I believe it was in January or February. I really can't remember now. But now that it's May. I finally have some time to get these uh, maintenance videos out. And this week we're going to start off with the refurbishing of the inner teak, the inner gunnels, how we uh, repainted it and restained them, and the really unique look that we were able to achieve by doing that. And I think you're really going to like this. And then as the weeks come, you're going to see additional maintenance videos, about one a week until I uh, get them all completed, a heater install that will keep uh, the windows nice and clear in the mornings, some uh, gunnel work, some uh, kiwi grip install, uh, you name it, there's a bunch of little things that we got going on here, but I have to say this before I go any further, huge thank you to my friend Brian, um, who let me keep my boat in his pole barn over the winter and for all, for all his help uh, on all these projects without his help and without his generosity, none of this would have been possible. So if uh, you want to leave a thumbs up or a like on the video, um, I will gladly pass that appreciation on to Brian, um, for, a. Uh, Letting us do all these things and letting us take a look at how all this went. Okay, so we're going to start off here with me prepping up the uh, port side of the boat. Brian was doing the starboard side. I was doing the port side. And if you look at what's on there, the inner gunnels is the wooden part right there. That's all teak. And that had been refurbished, uh, I think, about five years ago. And you can see teak. Teak is beautiful wood, without a doubt. Uh, but you can see it, it does take abuse pretty easily. And uh, this had sicken stain on it, S-I-K-K-E-N-S. Uh, -E and I, I tell you what, this stuff is bulletproof when it comes to sanding. But when you put a ton of sun onto it, uh, it seems to, it, it definitely shows its wear after after not a real long period of time. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, just removing all the things that are uh, on that port side. And then I'm going to get to sanding. And what I use to uh, sand this thing down, not only... A hand sander but i had to use my well i used a random orbital stander but i had to use 60 grit 60 or 80 grit sandpaper to even make a dent in this uh, sickened stain but you'll see with a lot of hard work elbow grease and uh, persistence we eventually were able to uh, get all this uh, stain off so another thing to note here if you look uh, there to the right you see my uh, lure station that's where i keep uh, most of my spoons flashers flies meat rigs and other odds and ends and you'll see later on in the video we actually strip that down as well and custom paint that as well in the same colors to match the uh, the inner gunnels and that came out just absolutely beautiful really all of this uh all of this woodwork came out really really nice i'm uh, i'm excited uh, to see 
I guess the biggest thing is how long it lasts. Uh, I'd like to be able to uh, see if I can get it to last a lot longer than that stain. But, uh, yeah, while I'm doing this here, uh, working on the port side, Brian's over on the other side finishing up the starboard side. He had started a day or two before me and uh, was just completing his side. So he, he had a big jump start on me, but uh, both of this came out pretty good. So... Let's continue on here as I'm plodding away with my random orbital sander, trying to figure out how to get this bulletproof stain to come off these gunnels. So you see I'm a little farther along into the progress now, we're into the process really, and I've switched over to an air driven sander, uh, still with a 60 or 80 grit sandpaper to really try to remove some of the stain. You can see it's coming off. Um, it just did take a really, really long, long time and uh, a lot of tedious uh, attention to detail on this. But uh, like anything else on a boat or really anything you're working on, that's the key to it. You take your time, you do it right, and the end results pay off for sure. <laughs> And you can see Brian in the background there going over some of the parts that I'm sure that I I messed up or maybe weren't up to his standard, which I appreciated. It was good. Like I said, it's, it's fun to work with a buddy, especially somebody that has uh, a lot of knowledge on how to do these types of things. It seems to make the time go by a little faster. And in case you can't tell, that is a beautiful shot of my left ear, which also tells me that I was overdue for a haircut. Yeah, stunning video footage right there for everybody. But we're continuing on and uh, just about to wrap up this sanding project. So I'm not sure exactly what's going on here if I'm taking a nap while Brian is finishing up that side, but we're just wrapping up the sanding. Brian has finished up his side, and uh, let's get a look here at the overall completed sanding job that we did on these gunnels. So now you can see both sides being done. This is completed sanding. That's my side. And uh, just walking you around here so you can see up close. How that teak looks once it's been sanded down. Completely different look once you take the stain or the varnish off or any of the paint. But that's Brian's side as well. Looking pretty sharp. I'll, t I'll give you that, Brian. Looks pretty darn good. And then, of course, there is the uh, transom or the rear section. And, uh, yeah, let's get some paint on here. Let's uh, start making this thing look almost brand new. Okay, so the color we went with, and this is the base color. This is a solid color oil stain by Cabot called Dockside. It's a light brown. You can see on the lid there what color it is. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply this to the gunnels, let it completely dry, and then once that's done, we're going to go over that with a semi-transparent oil stain in a color called Espresso. It's a darker stain. And you're going to see how this comes out in just a moment. It's a really unique look. It really adds a lot of character uh, to this old teak. So here we go. This is just a two inch uh, standard brush. Uh, go with a good quality brush, of course. Uh, something that's not going to leave a bunch of brush hairs behind that you got to pick out with your fingers. Um, I forget the brand on this brush, but uh, yeah, it was a decent quality one. And of course, going with the grain on the teak and just getting a nice coverage and, and this paint really covered well i'll say that it was a one one coat paint uh we didn't have to go back over anything except areas that we may have missed it uh, covered up everything pretty darn good and you can see just like that it's definitely covering well this is one coat uh, i was really pleased we did not have to go over this two or three times this kept us to about a one day project just getting this paint on so yeah let's continue on 
Now you can see this is the final product with the Cabot paint. Again, the first coat before we go over it with the transparent stain. Came out really nice. I mean, just this color alone looks pretty good, but uh, now we're really going to modify it. So again, what we're doing here is we've put down that base coat, that solid color, and now we're going to go over it with a semi-transparent stain from Minwax called Espresso. Now the big thing here is to make sure that your first color has completely dried. You don't want these to mix together in liquid form. You want the stain to go over a dry uh, base coat. And once that base coat's dry, all you have to do, what Brian is doing here, he's taking a rag or a foam brush or something of that nature. He's applying it directly over that paint, and then I'm coming along behind him, uh, and I was using either a rag or, or another foam brush or even a blue shop towel. Those paper blue shop towels work really well as well. And what I'm doing behind him is I'm just dragging the stain off the top of the paint until it gets the texture and the look that I like. And, uh, you know, if you put it on there super thick, you're not going to be able to see through it. But by dragging or pulling it off that, uh, that bottom coat, you can make it look like uh, natural grains in the paint. You can make it look like wood swirls. Um, just a lot of really unique things that you can do. And uh, I was, we were really pleased how this came out. So I'm going to let this play out a little. You're going to see some of the progress, how this went. Okay, now you can see me coming through after Brian's applied that, that stain, you know, that uh, overcoat of stain. You see me coming through now with the, what, what, what I found was the best way, I think, to pull off that stain was this two-inch foam brush that I was using. Uh, with, it, with this, I could really find the patterns and the, uh, the characteristics uh, that I really like to bring out of this uh, stain. And the more you do it, uh, the, the, the more comfortable you get with it it really comes out really nicely you can find little techniques little ways to move the brush to kind of not kind of but really actually make it look like uh like real wood grain or real character in this wood so you see i'm just keep working it over and working it over until uh, i find the point where i feel that it's good enough now the, the one thing you got to remember here is well really two things don't don't let this stuff dry too much if you let it dry it's not going to come out correctly you got maybe a 10 to 15 minute window once the stain goes on before you start manipulating it with that brush or rag or whatever you want to use. Uh, the other thing is watch your, don't get your fingerprints on this thing because uh, it's really easy to smudge. It's really easy to mar. Um, it's really, really uh, fragile until it dries. Now, once it dries, uh, make sure it dries completely. It's easy to damage, like I just said. And another thing you can do, which I didn't do, and I may still, is you can go over this with a clear coat. Whether it be a, uh, a brush-on clear coat or even a spray-on clear coat. Uh, it, it will help protect that, uh, that finish. 
and possibly uh, you know let it help it last a lot longer down the, down the years. Just remember, if, though, if you ever need to go touch this thing back up, that clear coat is going to be uh, prohibitive, and you're probably going to have to sand that off to be able to uh, to get back to the looks that you like. But uh, well, let's go ahead and take a look at the final product here. How this all came out once it's dry. And you tell me what you think. Give me your comments down below. This, is this something you would like to try? Uh, you like the way it came out? Didn't like the way it came out? All the above? Uh, give me some feedback on this. But here we go, looking down the port side, around to the back, and then over on the starboard side. I gotta say, I'm pretty in love with this. Really happy uh, with the way that this came out. But let's take a look at the lure station now, and we can see how that came out as well. So this lure station you saw not long ago in the video sitting on the back of the boat. Um, it's made out of cedar. Actually, the guy you see there on the left, my friend Brian, uh, made it by hand for the boat. Like I said, the, uh, uh, it sits where a normal lure station would uh, behind the passenger side uh, cockpit seat. Holds all my spoons, flash, well, a lot of my spoons, flashers, flies, meat rigs, you name it. And it's made out of cedar. Uh, so it's, you know, excellent material for a for anything that's out on the water and we just went ahead and we did it the exact same way here um, we started off by painting it with that uh, dockside color again by uh, Cabot it's that solid oil based stain and now you can see me going over it with the Minwax uh, that I showed you previously the Minwax semi-transparent in espresso uh, so dark over light now I've applied it to that top um, well, that top section there, and now Brian's starting to take it off, and you can see us looking at it and experimenting with, you know, what might be the best way to remove this stuff. We actually did this before we did the inner gunnels on the boat. This was our, this was our guinea pig, and so you can see us trying different things here, and, and really, you, you can see us becoming pretty, pretty pleased with the way this thing came out. And you can see it starting to, as I'm pulling that off. You can see it actually starting to lighten up more and more as it goes on but uh, yeah let's take a look at this and you can see how this process goes uh, probably probably a little more clearly um and yeah this is something you're interested in doing don't be afraid it's not hard to do and the results can be great i think this could be really applied to really any remodeling or not remodeling but refinishing of uh, any kind of wood not only on a boat but in your home uh, if you're looking to maybe Look some or make something look distressed or old or unique, um, full of character. This is a great technique to go ahead and try. So let's go ahead and let this play out a little.
here's when you can get really creative. So we've gone over it with the stain once, and we've pulled it off, and we've gotten pretty unique results. But uh, I, I thought I would like it a little bit darker. So now, after the stain is set, some I'm going back over it now, with the same stain, and darkening it back in. And uh, then I'm going to pull it back off again. I'm, I'm just looking for, uh, you know, really whatever, whatever my mind wants whatever my eye wants to see. There's no wrong way to do this. And again, you can see I'm working with the grain, that same two inch brush, applying that stain, and then just working it in and pulling it off uh, you know, until, like I said, until uh, I get the results that I want to see. And you can see we're continuing on, continuing on with that same trend here as we go around the station more and more. We're, we're darkening it in darkening it in on all sides and uh, just tweaking it until until it matches what really we want to see in my, my mind's eye. Now at this point, I'm looking at the bottom section, the, the section below where Brian's working there, and I'm pretty pleased with that outcome. I think that's exactly what I was looking for, so I'm letting Brian know. And he's, uh, he's going to try to match up now uh, the part that he's working on, and we're going to try to just try to match up the rest of the sides on this thing to, to really get it to all be somewhat uniform. So I'm liking where this is going. So I'm taking a final look here and really liking what I see. So I'm going to grab the camera and we'll take a walk around this and you'll be able to see really how this thing came out. And this is almost dry right here. Uh, it really has a nice gloss to it. And you can see how that, uh, that stain laying over that paint really gives it some unique characteristics. Um, wood grain look, weathered look, distressed look, whatever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, I really like it and I think it's going to go wonderfully on the boat. So. Let's uh, take a look at that. What does it look like on the boat now that it's all completed? Well, that's it right there. I went ahead and did a distressed gray on the doors, and uh, that's now matching all the gunnels you can see behind it. The only thing I have left to do, and you can see actually behind that station on the seat, I have a couple of uh, uh, doors and some other trim parts to, to still complete, but hey, it's going to get there. Uh, just takes time, but yeah. Quite pleased how this came out let me know in the comments what do you think uh, is this something uh, you'd like to try on your boat you wouldn't uh, maybe the reason why or, or why not but uh, that's going to be it for this time and uh, come back next week i'm going to have another video out next week and we're going to show you some additional things that we did on the boat uh, we did eyes and glass cleaning refurbishing we did uh, the top gunnels and kiwi grip we did, uh, what else did we, we did a, a ton of stuff, a heater install, um, a lot of other little things, uh, here's and there's. But uh, yeah, we're going to put that out little by little. And the next one should be out about this time next week. So come on back, check it out. If you like what you saw, think about subscribing. I would appreciate it. And if you did like it, um, yeah, if you really liked it, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. Anyway, everybody take care. We'll see you on the next one. Whatever.